Okay, so I will introduce next uh, Father Pedin, Shuri Abdelaziz. He comes from the uh, Center of Research in Economics and Statistics in Paris. So, uh, yeah, let's welcome the speaker. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks for being here. So, I'm about to present my work dealing with variational inference and more precisely, uh, evidence outbound maximization for uh, model selection. So, um, to sum up, <coughs> we consider uh, a collection of random variables, a, co uh, a collection of different models to which uh, the true distribution uh, may belong, and um, we also consider uh, several collection of variational uh, approximations, one per uh, model, and the idea is that uh, in the mind assumptions we have uh, strong theoretical uh, guarantees uh, to the uh, variational approximation and the question, but do, do, we do not know uh, when there is a true model, which one it is and the question is that, is it possible to build a model selection criterion uh, <coughs> such that the associated variational approximation um, retains the same properties than uh, the one that uh, is associated with the, the true model so uh, first, um, okay. So, yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So first, I will present the the mathematical objects I will use. So the variational approximation of uh, temporal posterior distributions. Then I will present the model selection framework and the mm, uh, lower bound uh, criterion I will use and the. Uh, Finally, I will present the consistency results uh, I get on it. Okay? So to begin with, I will define what, is, what I will call a temporal posterior distribution. So to begin with, uh, by now we, we just consider one model, okay? and uh, we, we observe a collection of, uh, of uh, random variables uh, distributed according to some distribution, some true distribution, and we, we, we assume by now that the true distribution belongs to our model. Okay? So we have a likelihood, and, um, and we, we adopt a Bayesian approach, so we, we define the prior on the, the parameter set, okay? So we have the classical uh, posterior distribution, that is defined like that, and what we will uh, consider here is what we'll call the temporal posterior distribution, that is a slight, slight variant of the regular one. The only difference is that we raise the likelihood to an alpha power with alpha lower than one. Uh, why doing this? Uh, there are many reasons, it's easier to sample from it. Another one it is, is that it is uh, robust to model specification, which means that we, we still have uh, consistency results even when the, um, the true distribution does not necessarily belong to the, to the model we choose. And uh, another, um, another opinion property is that the theoretical analysis is easier. Not only the proof, but also uh, the, the conditions that are necessary in order to obtain the the consistency of our distribution. <laughs> Once we have defined our uh, tempered uh, posterior distribution, this is the one we will uh, approach, approximate. So, uh, as in classical variational inference, uh, sometimes the target distribution is not tractable. Here it is our tempered variational distribution, uh, our tempered posterior distribution. So we'll approximate it. Uh, so we consider a variational set of uh, tractable distributions. And, uh, we will take the closest distribution uh, in the compatible sense. Okay, so this is also equivalent to maximizing this quantity, that is uh, the uh, evidence tower bound. Okay, so this is the definition of the um, uh, variational approximation of our temporal posterior distribution. So there are several examples of variational sets. For instance, uh, we can consider parametric approximation, uh, Gaussians, for, ex for example or a mean field approximation when we have uh, some partition of our parameter set, okay? So uh, now we will define the, the model selection framework we use, okay? So instead of just considering one model, we consider a countable collection of models. For instance, let's think about uh, mixture models. There was no reason to, to consider a, a four-sized uh, mixture rather than a five-sized one. So we consider a countable collection of models, okay? And we, we can, so we have uh, several parameter sets and we can define a prior on the, the entire parameter set. 
So first, we put a prior belief over the different models, and then given a model, given model K, it is possible to define a prior over this the corresponding parameter set. Okay, and then we can define a temporal posterior distribution for each model and uh, its fractional approximation, given the, the, the K model, model K. Okay. And uh, in, in practice, when uh, in the variational based community people want to um, proceed to model selection, the, the, the model criteria that is uh, often used is the, the, the evidence level bound. So I, I recall the, the, the alternative definition of the, the, the variational approximation, which is a distribution given model K that maximizes this evidence level bound. So we'll just call the evidence level bound the maximum. Uh, again, uh, given model K, the maximum of this function. So this is what we will call the elbow. And in practice, in the variational based community, people uh, aim to optimize this quantity uh, across the, the different models. And what we propose here is to penalize this quantity using, um, using our prior belief of the different models. It, it gives this. So, the model selection criteria we use is this one, and the penalty term acts like as a as a as a measure of complexity of the model considered. Okay. So um, you have to, to keep in mind that when you, you consider one one model selection uh, criterion, this is fitted to a given objective, and here the given objective is the is the following one. If we assume that there is a true model, okay, then we know that the variational approximation associated with the true model has appealing properties. But we do not necessarily know which model is the true one. So the question is that, is it possible to build a model selection criterion such that the corresponding variational approximation retains the same properties than the, the, the one associated with the true model? And the answer is yes, if you consider this Model <laughs> so now I will define what I call what Sorry. I mean uh, when I use. What was pi sub k? Sorry. Can you can you recall what is pi sub k in that criteria? Small. The, the yeah, one, that. It is the prior belief we, we place over the different models. Okay. Okay. So we have several models. We place prior belief over over them. So this is known beforehand. Sorry. This is known beforehand. Yes. Exactly. Um, so, uh, yes, so now we, I will uh, explain what I mean when I, I talk about uh, consistency and the uh, appealing theoretical properties. So just to begin with, I need to introduce some technical condition uh, for <coughs> posterior uh, distribution concentration. So uh, to begin with, we assume that there is a true model, okay? There is a true model and uh, an associated true variable, okay? So in the Bayesian, uh, in the Bayesian, uh, uh, um, theory, uh, there is some condition called the prior mass condition in order to obtain the concentration of the posterior distribution. So, if this condition is satisfied, which means that uh, the prior associated with the true model puts enough mass on neighborhoods of the true parameter, then uh, you can get the concentration of your, posterior, your temporal posterior distribution. You should just consider the regular posterior distribution with alpha is equal to one. You have you, you need some additional uh, conditions, but we just focus on this one, okay? And the rate of, of, uh, of the contraction is defined by the uh, enough mass and uh, the radius of the neighborhood in the definition of the prior mass condition, okay? And there is uh, similarly a condition, a similar condition in order to obtain the concentration of the variational approximation associated with this. Uh, um, temple posterior. This is uh, this one. It might, it might seem a little bit technical, but the only thing is that in addition to, in addition to the, the previous prior mass condition, your variational set here might uh, must um, contain distributions that are sufficiently concentrated around the true parameter. So once you have these two conditions, so the prior mass, the prior puts enough mass on the neighborhood of uh, the true parameter and the variational set contains uh, distribution that are sufficiently 
concentrated around the, the true parameter, then you can obtain what we call uh, the consistency of your uh, temper for stereo distribution. Okay? So the result is that if you <coughs> assume that there is a true model, okay, and you assume that the prior mass condition is satisfied, so you know that um, your variational approximation associated with the true model, okay, is consistent with the rate of convergence is the one defined by the prior mass condition. Okay, so this is our uh, uh, notion of uh, consistency, which means that we consider a distribution in our true model, and we look at the statistical Rene divergence uh, to the true distribution. Okay. We take the expectation with respect to the parameter of theta distributed according to the rational approximation, and then we take the expectation with respect to the uh, random variable distributed according to the true parameter. Okay? So this is an opinion property uh, for the uh, rational approximation associated with the true model. And the fact is that if we consider the rational approximation associated with the selected model, then we have exactly the same uh, the same warranty. Actually, there is a, a, an additional term here, but in practice, this is an order one over n, which is uh, in practice always uh, faster than the, our rate of conversion. So actually, um, even when the, the selected uh, model is not the true one, we can still obtain consistency of our variational approximation, selected variational approximation as if we uh, consider the, the true one, okay? Another appealing property of our um, uh, model selection criterion is that it is robust to modern specification. So it's, it's what I talked about uh, in the beginning of the talk. So this is the following uh, um, theorem, which might seem a little bit technical, but there is absolutely no assumption. So there is no assumption of the existence of a true model and then no assumption of, of uh, a new prime mass condition. And uh, this remains available for only a value of k. So you, you can take uh, the infinity in the right hand, the right hand side. Okay? So in order to, to illustrate this result, I have a small uh, example. So this one, which is that um, I, I, I take one true distribution, so which has only, uh, follow only one assumption. So the one at the top of the, the, the slide no other uh, assumption. I, I, I choose as, as my models, I have a collection of models, univariate Gaussian mixtures, okay, of any possible uh, size, okay? And what I say is that for each given size, okay, I, I get a variant, variance term, which is this one, which is of order k over n up to the logarithmic factor, okay? And so the larger the k, which is the size of the, of the mixture, the larger uh, the variance scale. But we have a bias <coughs> term here, which is the, 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 the smallest distance between the true distribution and any mixture of size k. So this is actually a trade-off between the bias of, and the variance term. The bias is uh, decreasing with k. The, the larger you take your uh, your uh, your mixture on the smaller, the, the closer, the closer you will obtain your uh, your distribution, your mixture to the true distribution, but the larger will be the the variance. Okay, so this is a, a, a result that is robust to the specification because we, we do not assume that the true distribution belongs to any of the model and it is uh, it's, uh, still available. Okay. And so, uh, just uh, a last point. So, two small applications of the of this uh, work. So, in these applications, we just assume one thing: that is, uh, there is a true model. Okay. So, we assume that uh, the, the the true distribution belongs to one. We do not necessarily know which one it is, but we assume that there is one true model. And first, we consider uh, Gaussian mixtures. Okay. So, we. We consider that the true distribution is a Gaussian mixture. Okay, we do not know necessarily what is the, the size of the true mixture, but we know that the variational approximation associated with the selected uh, number of components is um, <coughs> consistent, and we can obtain its uh, rate of convergence, which is k zero over n, 
Well, Casio, Casio Road is a, is a true uh, number of components, a total logarithmic factor. And we can have the same for uh, probabilistic principal component analysis. So here, the, um, is the, um, the, the, the model will be characterized by the number of principal components, we assume, and we can obtain a rate of convergence of t time k0 over n up to a time. Thank you. Are there any questions? Okay, so can you say anything about the prior mass condition in practice? Like how is it to satisfy or yes. what? Yeah. Yes, hello. So in practice, um, actually, I, I didn't mention the prior mass condition in these two applications because uh, actually uh, the prior mass condition is linked, directly linked with the, uh, the rate of convergence of your uh, operational approximation. So in order to obtain the rate of convergence of your operational approximation, you just need to, to, to find a, a rate that satisfies the prior mass conditions. So actually, what I did here in the two examples is to find a, a rate of convergence that satisfies this prior mass condition for each model. And then the, the, the thing is, I come back to the prior mass condition. OK. And the thing is uh, to find here, you know, in this, because if you consider the rational approximation, it's this prior mass condition, is to find a rational approximation, OK, uh, that is suitable to the the, the point and actually uh, very often you you can take a parametric uh, a variational set for instance if you consider mixture numbers you can take a mean field approximation with independence between your weights and each of your components uh, for the principal uh, component analysis PCA you put independence between your uh, principal components so your variational approximation will be uh, uh, so uh, the distribution that is independent, okay? mm -hmm. and you you try to, to find actually in practice the the slim, simplest one, simpler simple one, a simple rational distribution, and uh, actually this is the only thing to do is to, to find a suitable uh, rational distribution, okay, and actually when you it's just to, you have to actually to, to do the computations to find the, the true one that. It's actually, it's, you, you have to, 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 to uh, check that this condition is satisfied. So it's more or less easy to check that. More or less. But it's, uh, <laughs> quite, uh, it's quite uh, it's a complication. OK. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, let's, let's. Oh, okay, there's another question over there. Yeah, sorry. So most of your bounds, the, you've got this pre-factor alpha of 1 minus alpha, which suggests that like, the bound is, you got a singularity at alpha is 1, which is the normal, if I understood it right, that's the normal basic case, right? Can you, like why? Why is your why? Why are they all breaking down in the sort of normal setting? Uh, could you repeat the? Uh, well, like most of your bounds, uh, like yes. the forward or something. Uh, you've got this like you got you know things over one minus alpha, right? Yes. So alpha is one, which if I understood it right, that's the normal Bayesian case. Yes. Yes. Then yes. You've got sort of vacuous bounds, right? So you mean that uh, actually when when you 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 put the case of a phase equal to one. The, this is a, actually a, a quite different case, and uh, this is. Um, but that's normal Bayesian inference, right? Yes, right. yes. But actually, the, the point is that it is really a different point because, um, actually, the the I, I told at the beginning I, I told uh, about uh, some properties. Here, uh, uh, yeah, okay. So theoretical analysis is easier. I told that. Actually, the point is that if you, you, you consider the alpha is equal to one case, okay, um, you, you will need uh, additional assumptions in addition to your prime mass condition, which are testing conditions. And um, actually, the point is really different because you, you will have uh, different tools in order to prove your results because it won't actually you see that the Rene, alpha Rene divergence when uh, alpha is. Uh, Converging to one, it will be the Kubert like case. So it will be uh, different tools in order to 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 prove your your uh, theorems and also the the assumptions that you will uh, you will you make uh, will be different. You will have additional uh, assumptions, and uh, in addition to this, uh, you you won't have the robustness property because 
the, the prior mass condition is only available if you consider a true model. And if you remove this uh, alpha lower than one case, it won't be available. Uh, only a robust result uh, won't be available. So. It's big, it's big. Uh, have you looked at algebraic one at all? Um, actually, the, the alpha is equal to one case, has, uh, not in model selection. Okay. So, but uh, uh, Zhang and Xiaodao uh, treated this case. Uh, so, in a paper called, I think, uh, on the uh, rate of convergence of rational approximations or something like that. Uh, it's a paper that have uh, written uh, this year or last year. I, I can't remember, but uh, yes, but it's it's done for a single model, and uh, the point is really different because they have additional condition, and uh, it's a little bit different. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So that's the speaker.